Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I would like to discuss burning Blu-ray discs. Specifically Blu-ray data discs, uh, not, not movie discs. So this is not going to be the way that you burn a, say, a, a movie onto a Blu-ray to run it in a Blu-ray player. This is for using a Blu-ray as a means to store files, uh, which is very different. Now, this actually came about as a thing that I grew interested in uh, as I started recording footage. Uh, specifically, this is more for, uh, for work than it is for YouTube, although I'm certainly doing it for YouTube too, is I was looking for a, a decent long-term archival solution for video footage. So I generate a large amount of video and I'd like to store it somewhere where I can be reasonably certain that it's going to be available and accessible at some point in the future. Now I do have a NAS, but there's a difference between say backups and file storage and an archival solution. So I don't think that hard drives are a particularly great solution for archiving data for just, you know, getting it off your computer and sitting on sitting it on a shelf for quite a while. I did a bit of research. I found there are three major ways of doing it. You could put it on optical media, like uh, like Blu-rays, which is what I am going to be doing, at least for now. Uh, there's also, of course, tape, which is really expensive to get a drive for, although the tape itself is actually fairly cheap per terabyte of storage. And then there's also something called RDX, which is a magnetic disk-based storage, not to be confused with hard drives. And RDX is kind of in the middle. Blu-ray is the is the cheapest in terms of just cost for discs and drives and stuff. Although I'd imagine as you start scaling up and storing large amounts of data, then tape and RDX becomes a lot more economical. But I decided to go for Blu-ray. Blu-ray discs, especially if you get reasonable ones, will last for quite a while as long as you're careful with them. Uh, Quick tip, use the big jeweled cases. Don't store your data on optical discs in sleeves. Don't do this, don't do the slim cases. You wanna make sure that the disc is actually not touching, not physically touching the case at all. So you can see how that's lifted up above. Uh, if you run the risk, oh, if, you, if it touches, you run the risk of it scratching. Uh, you want it to be sort of float, free floating, supported just by the middle. Uh, and you also want to not put it in direct sunlight and also don't try and use regular CD-ROMs or regular DVDs for long time data storage because those can degrade over time. Uh, Blu-ray discs are a lot more resilient. Uh, in any case, when it comes to actually burning these things, it took me a little while to figure out how to do it right because I was trying to use Brazero, and in fact, I probably even have uninstalled it at this point, but uh, Brazero is the, is the GNOME official, there we go, the GNOME official uh, CD burning thing. However, you I was unable to get this thing working on Blu-rays. So when I would try and burn a Blu-ray on Brazero, it would error out and just kick the disc out of the drive. What I did find that worked though is XF Burn. So this XF Burn program works a lot better. I wish I could use Brazero just because it's the GNOME thing and I'm in GNOME, but I found XF Burn works a hell of a lot better. So if you want to burn, some files to a disk. Let's go ahead and burn some things. I am looking at uh, 25 gigabyte disks that I have here, although you can of course get them bigger. Uh, what I've done is just because of the arrangement of my desk, I don't have easy access to my computer's uh, five and a quarter inch bays. So you can actually buy relatively inexpensively a five and a quarter inch bay USB cage sort of thing. And so I just bought a bought an LG burner and stuck it in one of these five and a quarter inch desk bays and plugged it in via a USB cable. And it actually works really well. 
So we'll go ahead and stick those in. Uh, I should point out that unfortunately, because of Brazero not working with Blu-rays, the built-in Blu-ray burning stuff in Nautilus also doesn't really work. So although Nautilus will let you, it'll pop, it should pop the disc up and it will allow you to put stuff into the disc, uh, you can't actually burn to it. It'll error out. So that's just an annoying side effect of this. All right, let's go ahead and decide what it is that we want to burn. There we go. Took a while to pop up, but as you can see, we have a disc here. I can't, you can't actually use this interface to do it though, because Brazero doesn't work. So when you, when you're in XF burn to actually do the job here, I am going to want to burn a composition, new data composition. Uh, so this is what's going to put actual files on the disc so that you can say, read them out. Uh, you could also burn a disc image. If you have a, re a uh, rewritable, uh, an RW type disc, then you can blank it and you can also master an audio CD. But we want composition. And then the only thing you gotta do is come down here and here you need to select the type of disc that you're using. So I'm gonna go with the 22.5 gigabyte BD. Uh, and that's just going to, I believe that is mostly so that XF burn can track uh, how much data you're trying to burn to the disc. And I'm going to go ahead and burn some videos to the disc here. So let's see, let's go ahead and put my work videos. Yeah, let's, let's burn some of these things. As a matter of fact, can I burn all of this? I might even be able to just burn all of this. So you can select the files over here in Nautilus, drag and drop them. And look at that, I can. So we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, I would I'd rather organize these, but this is just a demonstration. So I'm fine to, to burn a disc to do this. And let's go ahead and do um, work videos 913. And then all you have to do is click proceed to burn. And here's where you can select the some more information about the burning stuff. So what I've found is you if you check this um, BDR sequential recording, that will allow you to then, it'll take a second to toggle on, and then it'll allow you to specify the speed and the write mode. So I've never had a problem running max speed, although I've not burned a whole bunch of disks. As I understand it, slower speeds can increase the reliability of the burn, right? Burns aren't one, don't have a 100% success rate, and so there's a chance that it'll mess up and you will end up with a, a coaster. But I haven't had a problem with Max just yet. Leave that on auto and go ahead and burn. Now, the actual burn itself can take quite some time, depending on how much data that you're putting to the disk. This isn't a super fast process. And so we will let this thing go and then come back when it is done. Okay, uh, we are just about done here. So any moment, the burn should finish. And we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing back in and let's verify the files briefly, so. Because as I said before, these burns can fail. Now I am not doing this in a particularly um, methodical or formal way. I know I have seen some references to uh, some Python code a guy wrote. I forget if this was on Reddit or on Stack Overflow now, but I, I bookmarked the link uh, regarding um, checksumming and having a a set of tools that allows you to generate a an error correcting checksum and error correcting codes for the data on the disk and then writing that to the disk as well and then you can use that to verify it. I have not looked into that just yet. It It's on my list. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. 
So if, if you're interested in this sort of thing, because admittedly, uh, <laughs> Blu-ray discs are kind of not exactly the newest, most modern technolo technological wonders. So if you're interested in that, I can uh, spend some time doing some videos on checksumming to ensure the that your archive Blu-rays remain good. <laughs> you don't lose, don't su subject them to bit rot, things like that. Uh, in any case, uh, once it's mounted, you can just pop the dick the disk in and it should uh, pop up here and we can open up a file here and let's just check to make sure that this check to make sure that this worked looks like it so let's scrub through this thing yep looks good so that's my super, super sophisticated detailed check to make sure that the burn worked. That looks like it did. And then of course you can just eject the disc. And again, remember you wanna make sure you put them in the full sized jewel cases. Don't do the slim ones, don't do sleeves. And as always, you want to make sure you don't actually touch the disc part of the disc. That would be bad. Get that slotted in there and mark the contents of the disc. Aha, organization. And so that is burning a Blu-ray disc using XF Burn. Blu-rays are a relatively good, albeit finicky and time-consuming way of storing data for long term. Um, of course, Blu-ray discs themselves are rather new in the grand scheme of things. So it's not like anybody has written data to a Blu-ray disc to verify that it will still be there in 30 years. But it's for, at least for my use case of just holding onto these things for a couple of years, uh, it's probably more than sufficient. Uh, if I start having issues with them, I'll certainly uh, make sure to document that particular journey. But yeah. XF burn is definitely the way to go for this sort of thing. Brazero just does not work with Blu-rays. I was able to use it for CDs and DVDs, but it does not work on Blu-ray discs for whatever reason. All right. So I think I will call this video here. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting as always, and I will see you again in the next one. My cat has taken an interest in the the Blu-ray burner. You're being annoying.